Hello everyone, my name is Susan. Thanks for watching my second video for how to use RHB Futures GDS. Okay, then in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the main page for trading. Okay, let's get started. So, okay, this is the AES main page. Okay, this is the settings that I like. And so I'm going to close all these things and start to set up again with you. Okay, first, we're going to set up this price quote tab on the top on the top of this uh, this blank page. Okay, first go to this market data. Go to real time price quote summary all markets. Make sure you're choosing the one with all markets. Give it a click and you get this real time price quote summary all markets tab. Okay, so now we're going to learn how to add products. So we are setting up for the uh, Bursa Malaysia Derivative product first. Um, okay, press left. And you get to the page where you have uh, all the available products to trade. Okay, let's say we are going to trade this Crook Palm Oil, FCPO. Click on the Futures and we are going to add one contract. Select the contract that you want, press OK and it will appear here on your price quote summary. Okay, we can also add multiple products in one go. Okay, let's go back to the adding page, press select and this time around we're going to add this uh, KLCI features. Click this add button here, choose features and you got all this available FKLI uh, available months. Yeah, let's say I'm gonna add all this April, May, June. Okay, select this and then to select multiple products, you just need to press on the control button. It's on the keyboard, uh, bottom left side of the keyboard. It's a CTRL button. Just press on it, long press it. And then click on the products you want and release the control button after you have selected the ones that you want. Just press OK and it will all appear on your code summary together. Okay, so that's how we add products for the BMD market. Uh, okay, so now the CPO and CPO and FKLI are all together here. Okay. To make it better, we can actually separate out this CPO and FKLI. So the whole thing will look neater. Ah, okay, go to the right hand side, click on this thing like uh, looks like a notepad. Click on it, you'll get a blank row here. Okay, click on the blank row and click on this up button. So you can move this blank row up by clicking this ah, until here. So we have separated this CPO and FKLI. Looks much better now. Okay, now we're going to talk about this columns, columns available. So we have code, name, last price. Ah, this last price shows the last and price for the futures product. Okay, last time, like um, just example, uh, 1300 is the last time for this uh, FKLI Futures April contract. Okay, uh, you have uh, the day high, day low, and previous close as well. And you have this market status. Close today means that now market is closed because it's, uh, it's 12 in the morning. Okay. And once it is open, uh, 8.45, you'll see it uh, showing open. Okay, we can add more of these columns as well. So just anywhere here, anywhere on the columns, just right click and press add columns. You get this. 
pull it to the middle and because this thing is not working we need to drag it to show all the available columns to add okay i'm gonna add this uh, last trade day this i really use it often because okay add it in drag it into your code summary okay, i'm gonna try again ah yes pull it expand it and this shows the last trade day of the particular contract now add this so that you don't miss out the last trade day okay close this oh yes i also want to show how to remove the columns that you do not want ah, let's say you don't want to use this this turnover okay so bring out the add column tabs again and drag this turnover double click and drag it see drag it drag it back to its place and there it's gone it's back to this place okay so that's how we set up for the MD page okay now I'm gonna set up for the specified exchange page Okay, I'm not gonna mix this specified exchange contracts with my BNB, so I can set it in my page two. Uh, let's say I want to set all the US index to show in my page two. Okay, I can edit the name of these pages as well. So uh, point it here, right click, edit heading, and you can edit all 10 headings for your pages. Let's say the first one, I'm going to name it BMD. Second one, I'm going to name it US Index. Okay. So we, there we have it. Okay, now I'm going to add products for US Index. Go back to select and now we're gonna change this BMD. Put one click, and I'm gonna choose this CVOT, and I'm gonna look for my E mini DAO. Press the plus button, press features, and then just add the contracts you want. I'm gonna add two months here. Okay, there I have my mini DAO. I also want to add the SMP 500. Again, select. Uh, S&P 500 is in uh, CME. You can play around to find uh, the products from all these exchanges. Sometimes uh, it might be in other exchanges. You can take a look at it. Um, this S&P 500 futures here. Okay. Also, I'm going to add two contracts. And voila! We have our mini DAO and S&P 500 in page 2. So that's how we add products. Okay, next step, I'm going to show you how to add this uh, account info in the bar at the bottom, bottom, uh, bottom side of this uh, ASGDS. Okay, I really like to use this account info. Let me show you why. Expand it first. I'm gonna expand it bigger so that you can see. Okay, this is our account info. On the left hand side of account info, you can see all these figures. Okay, I only use three of these figures. The first one that I always look at it is total liquidity, most important figure in this tab. This total liquidity shows the total amount of fund I have in my account right now. Okay, take note that this is MYR equivalent. Means if you have any other currency, let's say if you have US dollar or Sing dollar, whatever dollar inside your account, it will all add up and change to ringgit to show in ringgit for you. 
uh, by using the default exchange rate it has in this uh, platform. This is just an indication to show you around how much fund you have in your account right now. Okay. This uh, figure is very important and very useful because it also shows you the mark-to-market profit or loss. Okay, let's say I'm holding two long contracts for mini Dow now. So this figure, it will float according to my profit and loss. Let's say, if the, let's say I'm long now, so if the market goes up, my money also goes up. So it's a very clear-cut figure. Uh, that I can see if I'm uh, uh, adding more money to my account or losing more money. Okay, the second figure I will take extra note on is uh, this I margin, initial margin. This is a very important figure it because it shows how much fun you need to hold the open position that you are having. Okay, again, I have two long contracts for mini Dow. So I need the 50,700 plus ringgit to hold these two contracts. So this is the minimum margin requirement needed to hold the futures contract. Okay, let's say now I have uh, more than enough of sufficient, uh, I have more than enough fund to hold these two contracts because my total liquidity, 200,000 plus, is obviously bigger than this 50,000. Okay, once if your total liquidity is like let's say 40,000 less than this initial margin means you will be in margin call. Whether you are in margin call or not, it will show in this percentage tab. It's going to tell you uh, if you have enough funds here. Let's say if, it's, uh, if you're in margin call, this blue figure will turn into red. So you have to top up or reduce your position if it happens. Okay, following up, uh, at the bottom, bottom column here is the open positions that you are having. Let's say, I'm looking at the net right here. I have net 2 down. The figure here shows two because I have two long positions. If it's a negative two, means that I have two short positions. So now I don't have any short positions and I don't have any CPO. So uh, my CPO is net zero and then my mini DAO is positive two. Okay, so that's how you see your positions and money. There are also other useful tabs here, like the position. You can click on it. You can see what you're having. You can see uh, like some of the details here. But I, I prefer just look at look, just looking at this. Okay, back to the account info. This order tab here, very important tab. Order tab. It is divided to upper and lower column. This upper column shows you the working orders you are having. And this lower column shows you the orders that have been filled. So it's a very clear cut, very easy to see. Okay, let's uh, give you an example. Let's say I want to queue one contract to buy mini DAO. They say I'm queuing at this, uh, much lower than this market price, just to show you. Okay, so now I have one working order. It's going to show here. Okay, it's not done yet, so we won't move down. Okay, let's say I'm going to change this price to higher because I want it to be filled. Okay, let's make it much higher. It will fill in the market. Okay, once I edit the prices higher than the market price and it is filled, it will show down here. It's a very clear cut way to see how many workings orders and filled orders you have. Okay, so that's how we set up for this trading main page.
Okay, after you have done with your settings, don't forget to save your settings. You can go to desktop, save desktop settings, go to the second choice, desktop profile code, and name. I'm going to name it demo for you. Press OK and save. Okay, if you happen to accidentally close one of your tabs, not to worry, just go back to desktop, load desktop settings, and go to the second choice, choose the one you have saved, and OK. It's going to load back your settings. OK, so that's all for today. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Uh, in my third video, I'm going to show you a detailed, uh, detailed way on how to place order in ASGDS. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.